I was told I need to be more descriptive oh. and that I have a limited vocabulary. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Build It Vlog. Today we are coming to you from Pomona, California, outside of Los Angeles, to go look at some dirt, of course. I'm joined by my co-host, Eric Jumper. Hello. Today's purpose is to check out, specifically, Quinn Cat, the Southern California, LA cat dealer, and what they do to repower scrapers. So the majority of earth moving out here is done by scraper. Scrapers are an incredible earth moving tool. They're very effective. They move dirt for a lower cost per yard than just about anything else in the right conditions. The thing is, the old scrapers need to either get replaced with new scrapers or need to get repowered. So that is what we are here to show you today is what scrapers do, how they move dirt, and more importantly, how QuinCat repowers them to bring old scrapers up to new emission standards. So that's what we're doing today. To start, we're in reverse order. We're gonna be showing the scrapers working first, and then we're gonna to go to Cat's facility at City of Industry to talk with their technicians, their team, and to give you guys an in-depth look as far as what the repower process looks like. This is a CAT 657E scraper. Previously, or at least when it was brand new, it didn't have emissions controls on it because that wasn't a thing back in the day. When were these, how old do you think this thing is? 30s or 1980s. Really? Depending on, in the, depending on the serial number, Okay. In the 80s, emissions wasn't really a thing. And then starting in the 2000s, they started, the government started to regulate emissions and they started to regulate it in a way that mandated having emissions controls on any piece of diesel heavy equipment you're running. So you either buy new equipment or since it's so expensive to buy a brand new 657, you can basically just swap out both engines. It's a 657, so it's a twin engine machine. There's an engine up in front, there's an engine in the back. It's a roughly about a thousand horsepower or so. Like one's like around 400, one's 600. Um, so they basically just swap the engines out. So this machine, because of the sticker there, obviously tier four final compliant has been repowered and is just being worked on right now. So we can take a look at it and then we'll go see the scrapers actually running in the fill. That top bit, so they get a brand new engine and then that top bit is basically the emission system that sits on top of the engine that now makes the air coming out of that stack in theory, I've heard cleaner than the air going into it much, right? in Los Angeles. Yep. yep. Yeah, very true. Which is wild. So, this machine essentially has no emissions thanks to the emissions controls. And you can see that silver bit there. They build an additional, I don't know, they, they, they do all the metalworking to accommodate that because it's not designed for it to begin, to begin with. Hood. Oh yeah, a hood. It's a it's a it's hood. A hood. So the they build they build a new hood. See, I invited Eric here so he could provide me grammar with some, correction expert some additional vocab. Yeah, with the with the repower. So a brand new 657 is two million plus dollars. It's very expensive, and even if you want to go buy one, if you have the money, 
Uh, they're a long ways out. You're not getting it tomorrow. Uh, just to give a little bit of scraper background here. The cut is up here. The fill is down there. They're basically flattening this hill to go put houses here. Southern California, go figure. With scrapers, they're most efficient when they're going downhill. So you wanna set your cuts up going downhill. So you'll see they're going up and then they're cutting down. They're hauling down and they're placing down here. That's by far the most effective way to do it. With the scraper, you're trying to fill the can as quickly as possible so gravity's helping you fill your, fill your bowl and you're burning less fuel when you're, when you're cutting like this. Another thing to consider as well is you want your, your pattern, your cycle times to be as, as condensed as possible. So you can see they're cutting up here and then they're placing only a few hundred yards away. You want that as tight as you can get it because again, the faster you can repeat the cycle and the less you have to travel, the more, you're, more dirt you're placing, the less fuel you're burning. Why the heck are there so many scrapers in Southern California? So many people ask this. Well, one, there's a lot of people, so that means there's a lot of development. Two, there's a lot of hills, and to develop the hills, you gotta smooth them out. And with all of these people in here, and as the city and area has grown in Southern California, you have to develop previously uneconomically possible viable land. So the, pro the projects right now that they're getting into, they involve a lot more dirt. And there's a lot more going on to build what they used to build in a lot simpler manner. So there's a big demand there. Next, you have the right soil conditions. So this stuff is so soft. There's no ripping, there's no blasting, there's no rock, there's nothing to worry about here. It's just nice dirt. And last, there's not a lot of rain. So you don't have these things slipping. We're in the hall road. Yeah, you don't, you don't have the rain and you don't have the winters. So you can run all year round. So scrapers, they like that nice, soft, dry dirt. They don't like water. They don't like anything hard. So as far as conditions go for scrapers, Southern California is just about unbeatable. And that's why just about every earth moving contractor out here runs these 57s. Uh, all right, so we're all wrapped up here on site. Special shout out to Sukit for having us out. Really, really nice of them to lend us their sights and scrapers to take pictures and videos of to share with all of you. Now we're gonna go to Quincat City of Industry branch. Eric, what'd you think about uh, scrapers this morning? M move big dirt real fast. Move big dirt real fast. Let's go see where they get operated That's, on. Well, what we were just talking about was pretty crazy. So they're they're loaded at around 40 yards of material at about 3,000 pounds a yard. So that's 120,000 pounds of earth being picked up and moved at 30 plus miles per hour every time these things open and close the apron. <laughs> All of it being managed by a guy that's jacked up on Monster 
probably got four hours of sleep last night. No. <laughs> he's got that's the, the radio that's the wrong print. way to do it. But that 120,000, that's a loaded low boy. That's, that's a loaded low boy inside of the bowl. Moving around at any one Moving time. downhill at 30 miles an hour. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, let's head to Quinn and show you guys how it all comes together at the shop. Doing some, uh, we just finished a uh, powertrain rebuild and this is another one that they're doing. So doing a complete powertrain plus some hydraulics. So these are the 651B repower. So some of the unique things about it is where we put the DPF up front, right, is where the fuel tank originally sits. So we take the original fuel tank out, we cut it up and open and use it to house the DPF structure and then we add the fuel tank to the rear. Really? And so then we have to add steps and catwalk and rails. So you see, that's what they're doing on that one there. Wow. Is they're getting ready to mount all that to do the fuel and then run the fuel lines through the can. And then we custom do the guard up top. Wow. That's a lot of work. So a lot of fabrication yeah. and all that's done right out of our weld shop here. Can you, can you just give a brief overview of what a repower is and how it works? So basically, a repower is we're taking the original engine out and we're upgrading it to a brand new emissions engine. So in this case, it's a tier four compliant engine. Mm -hmm. So to meet uh, the regulations for California, state of California. And while it's in here, you guys will do hoses and wiring harnesses and that kind of stuff? Whatever There's a lot of customization with the new engine because yeah. the new engine's all gonna be run on a lot of electronics, a lot of computer, sure. a lot of sensors. So all that's upgraded. And then we have to custom fabricate a lot of harnesses to make all the systems work together. Um, and then yes, while it's in, any time that we see any hoses or components, we'll end up doing them at the time of the, the repower. So we could end up doing transmission, torque converters. Yeah. Um, a lot, if you, that job site you were just on with Sukit, we went through most of those components. So you see the dip, so that's original untouched uh -huh. with the fuel tank and the air filter. Now this is our modified, where we cut open the fuel tank, house the DPF right in here. That's fascinating. By keeping the same footprint. Wow, so the DPF is kind of set off to the side on this. It's right in here where the fuel tank would be. And then we add the fuel, with adding the fuel tank to the rear, it keeps that same footprint, keeps most of this all in the same spot. That is so fascinating. Whereas to the 57s, you see all that was, sure. we pretty much created that structure there. there. We use, we cut it in half and use pieces. We add these pieces, keep the front and back. Isn't that wacky? I was telling them one of my first projects out in the shop from uh, CRC was we had to do 47 backhoes that we had to modify with a hoose filter. And so that was the design. We put it where the battery box was and we modified that to take the DPF and put a stack up. And if you look at the F models, that's the exact design Caterpillar went with. Is that right? Yeah. So that's a tier three? That, that was a tier three with the DPF. Wow. So Department of Water and Power. <laughs> Water. Yeah, yeah. This is wacky, man. Look at this. I'm sitting in the cab that looks straight out of the 70s. Straight out of the 70s. And then I look over and it's all brand new. All brand new. This machine, they said, could have between 50, 60, 70,000 frame hours on it. So you can see here, this machine has been in this shop and has been repowered. So they've gone tier one, two, three, four, and then tier four final now is where we're at. So this was modified and repowered as a tier three machine many, many, many years ago, and is now back in the shop to get repowered again as a tier four final machine. So you can see this is the old tier three engine. This scraper, it's a little ways behind this one, 
So they're going to take this whole engine out, and then that one has that new engine back in there. Most fun we get is after Halloween. I always buy the girls in the office, everyone in the office, pumpkins, yeah. and we let them run them over with a <laughs> roller. <laughs> that fuel tank that we cut open, this is what sits inside that houses the, the, the DPS. So we make a frame like this and that houses all that stuff. And then that fuel uh, tank is the enclosure around it. And you guys fabricate all this So yourselves. we fabricate all this here. So they essentially, because the machine's not designed to have the DPF and this new engine in there, they have to modify the machine to accommodate everything they need in there. Quinn has this enormous weld shop we're in right now, and they fabricate everything from scratch here. So this is the kit uh, to put it all together, and then these are pieces for actually 57 repowers, not the 51s, but it's, it's very similar. It was a, a CAT 992 bucket. They converted it, they cut the back off to convert it to run on a Komatsu loader. They got rid of the Komatsu loader, went back to CAT. So what they've done is they've taken that whole back section off and they've rebuilt it entirely to fit onto a CAT loader again. So this is kind of the last step. He's line boring in the back before this bucket will be ready to go back out in the field. The other thing that we do a lot for uh, Public Works and all them, um, the municipalities, is vandalism guarding. Oh. So we make the aluminum guards that cover gotcha. that cover the windows so yeah. when they have them parked to the other, on the, off the road. So these are all for those three powers. Yeah. So these are the different pieces. Ah. Those are the feet that the, the frames that we make mount to and then some of the racks, and then the, the, de, uh, the def uh, tanks okay. enclosure. All right, so we saw one that just got pulled into the shop under the knife, still has the old tier three setup within it. The one that's been under the knife for a while has the new tier four final setup in it, it's getting the finishing touches. And then right here is one that's completed, right? This one's totally done. Well, with the exception of a paint job but paint job. So the only thing left on this machine is paint, but otherwise it's repowered, tier four final compliant. It's ready to go back in the dirt. Look at that machine. Yeah. Skid steer. Weapon. High score. Skid steer, high score. <laughs>
What, what do you guys have to do to it? How messed up is it? So it was completely submerged, so pretty no much, way. yeah, there's video of the guys jumping off the roof into the surf. So that's how high. It was up mid-cap, or at least to the bottom of that window. And, uh, oh boy. Yeah, so pretty much a full powertrain and hydraulic, every hose. But, you know, it's sat in salt water overnight. So the corrosive effect in the wiring harnesses and stuff. So it's best on this one, we would do what's called a CAT certified rebuild. Strip it down to a frame, all new hoses, electrical harnesses, and go through all the components. Holy smokes. So are you just kind of waiting on them to decide? Yes, we're quoting that. I mean, you see just from that how quick all the fittings wow. already rusted, the rust. Um, a uh, fire uh, grater. Whoa. Whoa. So we, after we paint it red, we put an anti-graffiti clear coat over it, and that helps it from turning pink. Right, because it's a UV protective. Yeah. Oh yeah, they do turn it pink. Yeah. We like the fire because we get to, to build cool stuff for them. Yeah, we're just repainting this. Yes. Okay. Prior to us doing like the UV and all that. So is it is it LA County? LA County. We are all done here at Quinn Cat. I'm gonna put my running shorts away, like so. Repack and go to LAX to go to Bozeman, Montana. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. Probably our mo most in-depth cat dealer, caterpillar, any kind of behind the scenes equipment video I think we've done. So I really enjoyed that. Hopefully you enjoyed it too. And with that, stay dirty. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Good goodbye. Good goodbye. Bye. Ooh. Goodbye.